Hey everybody, would you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Starting first with an additional appropriation hearing today, and we're going to let Laura run us through the whole meeting. Yes. Dr. Hammock, run us through the whole meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. So the board uh, will recall over the last couple of meetings, we've been going through the process of um, uh, the required steps to execute a general obligation bond. Tonight, uh, the action for the board is a separate hearing. Uh, the hearing is intended to be sort of separate from the meetings. So that's why we kind of start off with the hearing uh, specifically. Tonight is the additional appropriation hearing. So this evening, um, as you were, will recall, we are funding this project through the issuance of these general obligation bonds. And the proceeds from this bond issue must be appropriated prior to being spent on the project. We had a notice of this hearing that was advertised in... Uh, as required uh, several different locations and those proofs of publication were in your board packet so just wanted to confirm for you all that we did the necessary posting for this hearing and all of the required uh, proofs of publication have been submitted for your review so the first step in tonight's hearing is for you to approve the proofs of publication that were shared with you just to affirm that those items were posted and then we will move into the public comment of the hearing and that's where any members of our public can make comment on the additional appropriation if after you've heard uh, public comment then we'll move into just our approval of that additional appropriations resolution and then the final bond resolution for your um, just to, th these timelines can get murky so just so you remember Tonight, this is not the end of the process. We will have one more hearing that will take place at our next board meeting, um, but this is sort of the middle phase of this process. So tonight, I would just ask for your approval of the proofs of publication as listed. All motion. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Next. And now the board president can open uh, the hearing for public comment regarding this additional appropriation. So we're going to make a motion to approve that additional. No, we're going to make, we're going to open the, just if there's any, we're just going to open this to see if there's any public comment. Yes. I don't think there's anybody here, is there? Anybody in there? Any of you? Okay, I mean, we don't I love have any. everyone who's in the audience. Let's just, you know. Look at the we, smiling we little faces. Yes. Look at them. They're like, get it over with. Absolutely. Let's go. Okay, so we need uh, a motion to approve the additional appropriation resolution as listed. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Okay, well, Kim already did that, so we'll make you second, Beth. <laughs> I said that was easy to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then do you need to talk about anything before we do the final bond resolution? Those were the, the documents that are included for your review. Okay, so we need a motion to approve the final bond resolution. I'll make a motion to approve the final bond resolution. April. Assisted. I'll second. Rob, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. So now we have a building report, and we don't have student of the month since it's too soon to pick somebody. <laughs> we'll have that next month. So we're going to have a presentation. Um, on their buildings the little principals the, do the little principals do i get yes. to well since steve's not here do i get to pick who goes first yes <laughs> oh look at this oh, the okay oh, you be first i love You're it mr welcome. morgan so we we don't have a ton uh, but it has been a, a great start um it really has so um just to kind of kind of give you the picture um for the first time in two years, we have two football teams again. So, Sweet. Yay! Yeah, That's it, it's, it's been a challenging two years for us for sure, but uh, I think seventh grade numbers are around 30 some, and we're at like 17, 18 in the eighth grade. So oh, almost 50 great. in the football program, which is really good. As I was leaving today to come over here to walk through the gym, our volleyball team was practicing. 
appeared to be 25, 30 girls in the gym. So that is awesome. So I think we finally gotten past kind of everything that had been going on and keeping kids away from sports. So it was, it was a good sight to see. Um, to go along with that, in I Succeed, um, kind of like our homeroom class, um, we have covered a lot of uh, expectations and procedural things to start the year. Um, so we have gotten through all of our safe schools training already. So we've done um, a fire drill, a tornado drill, um, an active intruder drill already with the students, and they've done a great job with all of those things. So a big thank you to our teachers for all of their help and support on that and our students. And then finally, um, something we're really excited about, it's going to be the first time at Beach Grove Middle School that we've had this, our National Junior Honor Society. Um, so Mrs. Eckstein and Mrs. Richardson are kind of taking that over uh, for this year. And uh, we've got about almost 50 kids that are in the National Junior Honor Society. Wow. Uh, it's not official yet because uh, at about the nine week mark is when we're gonna kind of start tracking those grades. But what we did was to identify those students at the end of the year, um, any seventh grade student had a 3.5 GPA or above. Um, we took in those classes and uh, a lot of really good opportunities there for them. So. Um, Mrs. Eckstein and Mrs. Richardson have plans for uh, outside uh, people to come in to talk with the kids about uh, different careers and things like that. Uh, they're going to be going to Central um, to, to work with a couple of teachers and do some mentoring uh, of students over there. So we're really excited about that. those opportunities. Uh, we have a couple of other volunteer uh, things that we're going to be participating in. So just a really, really exciting opportunity for our students. That's so great. thank you. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you thank for being first. All right. Who would like to be next? Oh, oh wow. That's right. I just, I just don't want to go after this <laughs> <laughs> uh, She's hard to follow. <laughs> um, very similar as Mr. Morgan. Uh, I just recently opened the doors and you know just seeing lots of smiling kids and, and faces and you know we're really uh, proud of the, the start that we've been able to get off to this this year at the high school um, handful of kind of fun things we have our uh, I don't know if it's technically officially a home opener but it's a scrimmage this Friday uh, versus Indian Creek football um, which we're pretty excited about so our student council I don't know if there's an unwritten rule about spirit weeks but they just take any opportunity to do a spirit week they can so we will have a, a spirit week next week um, and so if any other schools and I, I believe it was sent out to you as well Ms. Carmen um, so Monday is uh, your your favorite movie character with lots of asterisks next to that uh, in terms of what kids can wear and not wear um, Tuesday's red carpet uh, Wednesday's decades, 60s, 70s, 80s. Oh, we skipped the 90s because okay. <laughs> <That'll> be <good. laughs> the, there was the, the, the great uh, scandal of the 90s last school year at Beach Grove High School. Uh, it was not great. Lots of <laughs> kids were very confused about TLC. Um, <laughs> and that's the band. So we, we, we skipped that. I was also, um, as I was talking with a student about you know, the 80s, she, she very casually pointed out that in eight years, the 80s will be 50 years ago. Oh, gosh. So, sorry to bring that up. <laughs> I know it sounds, and it, it, it kind of hit me hard, so I felt like I would just share that. Yeah. That's, that's um, <laughs> Thursday is Hawaiian uh, day, and then Friday's BG, BG out day, so just for all your BG gear. Cool. Um, a, a big thing that I want to highlight that I'm, that I'm really proud of so far at the high school um, you know, it's no secret that the, the teacher shortage is it's a very real thing. I know that we felt it in all the buildings this year. Um, but one of the things I'm really proud of at the high school is some of the initiatives that we have going uh, in terms of being able to grow our own educators and really be able to develop the, the folks that we have in the building through our career ladder program. Um, and really giving an opportunities for some of our staff members who are just, just dynamic with kids and who have a proven track record with kids to give them a pipeline to be to be teachers in the district. Uh, a couple of great examples are Ryan Williams and Mike Renfro, who have literally hit the ground running and are doing an absolutely knockout amazing job like we knew they would. Um, so we're really grateful for 
uh, for that ability to be able to continue to grow our educators. And a lot of what uh, Mr. Carter and Mr. Barker are, are here now, and, and Ms. Herman as well participated, um, in being able to develop some of our high school students who have an interest in teaching. Uh, and so we're looking to really continue that, that pipeline, because I, I truly believe that's the only way we're going to be able to insulate ourselves as a district. Uh, we can't control, you know, the market, I guess you could call it. Um, but if we continue to kind of put our stock in, in growing our own educators and developing the talent we have here and keeping them here, um, then I'm hopeful that long term will be it will be okay, and we can weather the teacher shortage and have really great people for our kids. Um, so I'm really excited about about that being able to see Mr. Barker and Mr. Carter as they are. Um, planning professional development to, to grow and develop our teachers. They also are teaching classes every single day to some of our students who are interested in getting, growing into the teaching field. So not only are they training our teachers, they're also training our students to be teachers, which is just fantastic. Um, so that, that's probably one of the, the biggest things that I'm proud of, most proud of so far as we've kind of gotten the year off the ground. So I look forward to continue to work with them and develop our kids. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Miss <laughs> <Ms>. Fleming. <laughs> Good evening. <clears throat> if you've not been at South Grove since school began, please, please, please stop by. You'll be amazed by the crisp, clean, and welcoming look of our <laughs> halls and our doors. Uh, we're most grateful for the little facelift that we've received over the summer. So thank you to Dr. Hammock, all of you on our board, uh, Mr. Gerhardt and Mr. Reed, along with all those responsible for the work. In addition to hiring Yonke Painting, our custodial team did a wonderful job this summer of cleaning, waxing floors, and preparing our school for students. So um, it's just been a great, welcoming, warm place to be. When you come to South Grove, please be sure to check out the three classrooms that were converted into other learning spaces. Um, one room is now the wellness classroom, which we had wellness on a cart last year. Another room is now the STEAM lab, um, rather than converting the stage as, as previously uh, proposed. And the third room is our adult learning lab, ALL, where it all happens. The latter is the office space for our technology integration specialist and both of our instructional coaches. And that will serve as our hub for all of the wonderful professional development we have planned this year. It's really, truly amazing. And once we get all of our furniture, you're welcome to stop by and enjoy it. And um, all in Beach Grove City Schools are obviously committed to continual improvement. And as such, we would, um, could not be more excited about our team at South Grove. The collaboration, the creativity, the commitment, the compassion our team has already demonstrated is certainly commendable. Uh, with two phenomenal instructional coaches that are here tonight, six outstanding mentors, our dedicated student services team, and our dynamic classified personnel, um, along with all of our amazing teachers, partnered with parents, caregivers, and our incredible scholars, we're going to move mountains this year. There's no question about it. And um, our attendance at our back to school night um, is just one piece of evidence to support that great partnership um, that's, already, that's already started. Our year-long theme at South Grove ties well with our school-wide expectations of being ready, responsible, and respectful. The theme this year is focused on growing happy, healthy hornets. The South Grove staff read um, Sean Covey's book entitled The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens over the summer, and then we've adapted that work to develop um, developmentally appropriate lessons on these habits throughout the school year. These habits will be integrated into our expectations throughout the year, and we know these habits will be helpful for students long after their time with us. Thanks to Dr. Hammock's vision and the collective efforts of Mrs. Reed, our, Reeves, our instructional coaches, our teachers of exceptional learners, and our leadership team, we now are able to offer an essential skills class at South Grove. This, this class is for our exceptional learners who need more full-time support in the small group setting because of their academic, social, emotional, and or behavioral needs. We're really excited to see what Ms. Wagner, who is our um, essential skills teacher, along with Ms. McMillan, our LRE 51 teacher, and 
our speech teacher, Ms. Richards, will be doing with students. They already have really big plans to expand their cooking club and to do lots of hands-on learning throughout the community. You know, last year we started our after-school enrichment clubs. Last year we had 196 students participating and that included having our band and choir members after school. This year already, for the fall semester, we have a total of 189 registered. So um, that, that's pretty phenomenal with having band and choir now during the school day. Um, given an enrollment at 601, that puts us at 31% of our student body experiencing our after school club offerings. Even more remarkable this year is that we will work with Chartwells through the great work of Dulce and her team to provide dinner for all the children before they head home. So we're really excited about that. The final thing I want to mention that's happening at South Grove is um, the two major approaches we're piloting this year with sixth grade uh, to build student ownership and student capacity. In addition to offering band, choir, and the other related arts during the school day, um, we have developed a course known as Hornet Heroes. Our wonderful Dee Dee Horn and uh, Beth Walker are working on that course. Uh, the course focuses on building leadership skills in all of our students. The students will also take a deeper dive throughout the year into that same book I mentioned earlier. Applying those habits through goal setting, service learning, and community engagement. The second piece, or the second approach, is that all sixth graders will also participate in an I Succeed period, um, similar to what I believe is already offered at the middle school and the high school. Um, again, our instructional coaches have taken the lead with that. Um, during that time, uh, the students are partnered with either a classroom teacher, a related arts teacher, or our teacher of multilingual learners, um, giving them about a 1 to 15 ratio. And they will set academic goals, monitor progress, and build their portfolios so that they're ready to lead uh, conferences this fall and continue on with monitoring their own growth. Um, we hope to use this experience as a pilot experience so that we can determine next steps with grades four and five. So that's just the first two weeks. Cool. <laughs> wow. Hey. impressive. Ms. Potter, we're just going to pick you. Aww. Look at her great shoes. Those she always looks so nice. Well, it's so exciting to be back. Oh, my goodness. We're, like, giggling over here. Like, it's just fun to be around everyone again. So good to see everyone. Um, the first 10 days have been incredibly busy, but exciting. Um, as Andy stated, you know, the teacher shortage is real. Um, and we had a lot of turnover this year at Central. Um, starting in May, our interview committee was determined to get some amazing staff members, and we did. Um, it is spectacular. As you walk the halls, like, you just get this feel. I don't, I, I don't know how to describe it other than this feeling. Um, you walk and you just, it, the spirit that is throughout Central is um, catching and it is amazing. From our brand new teachers that grew up in Beach Grove and are now um, working in our buildings to we've had a couple of boomerangs that have returned to Beach Grove after leaving us for a while. And it has created this um, new family at Central that is just spectacular. So I'm super excited about that. Um, we are absolutely determined to have the best, the best year yet. Um, our teachers are working really hard to build that classroom community. They use community circles every morning um, and just getting to know their kiddos. Um, we're working hard to get to know the second graders. Uh, the second graders are obsessed with my black eyeliner <laughs> and Clay's height. So <laughs> that's, that's super fun. Um, but no, it's super cool to get to meet all the little ones again. You know, when you have 50% of your school turns over every year, that's quite the challenge. But we are determined to get to know each and every one of those kids as soon as possible. Um, our related arts team is working together to incorporate STEAM Wednesdays. Those will continue that Wednesday STEAM days. Um, our, instruct or our intervention team is focusing on benchmark assessing our students to see where they are currently. Um, so that we can plan for intervention as well as acceleration. Um, one of our big goals this year is to really push those kids that are already high achieving. Um, a lot of times we focus on the, the low, low, low students, the ones that need to catch up academically. But even in second and third grade, we've got a lot of kids that need to be pushed academically. Um, and it's, it's amazing what can happen when you target that instruction 
on the higher end as well. So we're really focused on that. Um, we've also been focusing a lot on attendance. Um, since COVID hit, it's no surprise that attendance has been a struggle as far as coming when you want to come to school and staying home when you want to stay home. Um, and so we're really uh, determined to fix that this year. Um, we started day one tracking down students that didn't show up, making phone calls. Hey, it was the first day of school, we missed ya. Um, those kinds of things. And then following up, if, if a child misses two days of school, you know, we're calling them and asking, are you okay? Is everything all right? We missed you, you know, and trying to work with families. Obviously, if they're sick, we want them to stay home. But if it's something else, we want them to know how important it is that, that we see those little faces um, at Central each and every day. So that's one of our big, our big pushes is attendance. Another one is safe schools. Um, as Ryan mentioned, you know, it's so important that we keep our schools safe. Um, and we've really hit that hard, especially with our new turnover. Uh, Beach Road City Schools has done a phenomenal job over the past several years at um, implementing uh, safe schools practices using Alice. And to onboard new staff to the knowledge that we have um, come to over the past years, it, it takes, takes some time. Um, but we've successfully done that, and we're going to continue to um, grow in that area as well. Um, and then before I go, I just want to brag a little bit more about the staff. Um, please come visit. These classrooms look like Pinterest board <laughs> experts. I'm not kidding. The themes are amazing. Like I want some of these teachers to come decorate my house. Um, it is phenomenal. And it might sound silly that a classroom theme is, you know, that I'm making a big deal about it, but these kids sit in their class all day long. And if they can come in and it looks nice and it's welcoming and inviting, then they're going to want to be there and they're going to want to learn and they're going to want to have fun. So consider this your open invitation. Stop by Central anytime. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Mrs. Probus. Well, hello everyone. It's good to see you and welcome back. Um, I get to share some really exciting things this evening, and Mr. Gearhart, I will try not to cross paths, but we might just a bit. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there has been a huge transformation on that Hornet Park campus. Just incredible. Um, if you think back to the last student day of um, the last school year, we had to have everything boxed and moved out by the end of that last student day, and we had a huge collective effort from the five-year-olds of kindergarten trying to help us with their desks to the wrestling and football teams to all of our grounds and maintenance and every Hornet Park staff member um, just pouring heart and soul into getting packed up. Then we stepped away for the summer, got out of the way, and our friends with performance services and um, their partnering groups worked like mad this summer to make as much progress as possible. And then Monday the 25th, that morning of our staff breakfast right after, we then got to come back to Hornet Park and see the progress that had been made. And it was at that point when um, it was all hands on deck. Every Hornet Park staff member, spouses, friends, family members, <laughs> our grounds, maintenance, every, basically everyone, the wrestling team and football team, um, the guys on our team with operations worked Amazing. endlessly. It was incredible to just see the collective effort. You know, you think of old barn raisins and they, mm -hmm. they went really fast with all hands on deck. It's not been that fast, but it has been a very uh, community, uh, hard work, sweat equity project um, to open on the first day of school. It was really incredible. The building is beautiful, and it still has a lot to be done. This is going to be something I'll talk about um, for a while still, but it is gorgeous. And um, I shared with the staff that on the day of back to school night, I spent the day kind of fussing in my heart and mind about this wasn't done or that piece was still unfinished and what will parents think about this or that. And instead, the, the strengths of the building and the, the shine was much brighter than any of the d uh, things that weren't finished yet or any of the flaws. And families over and over were just so complimentary of the transformation taking place. So I was very grateful to our community for that. So if we switch and talk instructionally, though, we have some major changes that have taken place at Hornet Park. Kindergarten shifted from teams of three to teams of two. So they partner teach reading and math in kindergarten. And first grade has returned to self-contained. Um, one teacher all day teaching all subjects, and that's gone very well. 
while it isn't yet required on that first week, we try to give teachers space, right, to not have meetings and get things set up and just get their feet under them. The Hornet Park staff and our instructional leadership team with the leadership of Angie Wack here, our instructional coach, they already started meeting the first week on what we're calling collaborative coaching and planning sessions because everyone has a, a slight addition or a change to the content areas they're teaching. So they already have started um, having structured sessions together where we're learning content and curriculum and making sure our instruction is top notch from the beginning. So I'm super proud of that. And we are administering baseline assessments now um, with all of those sweet fresh kindergartners. I wanna just congratulate as everyone else, our families. Um, it's been wonderful. They learned that new tra traffic pattern quickly and it's safe and efficient and I'm very grateful for that the Hornet Park staff and all of our friends around the district that have supported us in opening because there were a minute or two where I wasn't sure. <laughs> um, and we just love that thrill of the back to school experience so much. We did it again today. Mm -hmm. The Early Childhood Center, the reason I'm dressed for a preschool open house is because we had preschool open house right before this from four to six. And um, you know, if you think about, I think in March when we first started taking enrollment, I said, oh, I think we filled the first classroom. And then in April, I said, oh, we filled the second one. Well, we're full. There, um, we have filled every spot, and Monday is the first day of school, and I'm just, I'm just so excited. Um, I was looking back through some notes when I was unpacking the conference room, and I found my giant binder of community surveys. Do you remember back in 2019, we collected like 163 of surveys from community members that gave us feedback about this maybe early childhood center, right? And then we fast forwarded and we had the community's gracious and generous support with the referendum. And then in 21, we broke ground together. And then Monday the 15th yeah, of 22 will be our first day. Um, and their future graduation date will be 2037. So it's coming, you guys. Great things ahead. Um, thank you. Yeah. You could put a number on it. If we could add more rooms, how many would you say would I'd have to look at my wait list, but at least one more for a, a wait list as of now. Um, I had two families come tonight um, just to see if a spot had, had shown up. Um, so we gave them a tour and said we sure hope so. Uh, so, you know, we may have some a couple of families, I hope not, but that may have changed their mind since they made that deposit. Uh, I wasn't able yet to kind of run check on everyone who attended tonight versus everyone enrolled. So we hope we can and welcome a few more folks from our wait list. Um, but how many do we have in the preschool? How many in? I was, how many are registered? Yeah. We have 60 spots. We have reserved back a few places because um, Beach Grove residents who age into three years who have had received first steps and are special education students, we have to have a spot for them. So. Um, and we welcome you know them. So we have reserved back the spots that we typically grow into throughout the year. So there are a few holding spots for those um, incoming students, but all the other places are full for now. So our what we're saying is our capacity right now is 60. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come see it, you guys. I know everyone said that, but I mean it too. Um, when the whole project is done, I picture Mitzi helping us out with major fanfare and uh, community open house. So. Thank you. It's been quite the journey, but one that's been worth it. And I can't wait for Monday. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Provost. So we have a presentation mm -hmm. from the Beach Grove City Schools instructional <laughs> coaches. All of us. Um, we're so excited. This is a treat. So I'm really excited tonight, guys, to talk to you a little bit. You've heard a lot, if you haven't heard from me, um, about the TSL ABLE grant that we received. Um, so TSL standing for uh, Teacher and School Leader Incentive. And our grant is called the ABLE grant, which is Accelerating Beach Grove Learning Through Equity. Um, and when we talk about equity, one of the biggest um, inequitable um, issues we face at Beach Grove is the number of students we have living in or at the poverty level. And historically in education, it's, it's just a proven fact and we can find out all about that, is children who live in or at the poverty level do not have equitable access to effective or highly effective teachers. 
So we want to make sure that we address that um, issue in Beach Grove um, and really take it to the next level for our children. This is a three-year grant. We just finished year one, which is a planning year, and we're jumping into year two. Uh, year one went really, really quickly. We have three big main parts of this grant. One is marketing and communication, really highlighting the things that are happening in our learning community. For a small district, we're pretty, I mean, we could throw down against a lot of the other bigger districts in terms of what we offer to our students and our families. Um, and so really highlighting what we're doing, highlighting our diversity, highlighting all, everything that we have to offer. We are also really focused on attracting and hiring qualified teaching candidates while also retaining our current staff. And then finally, and this is a bulk of it, of the grant is our really focusing on better managing our human capital management system. And that's a big word. It's a buzzword that's been around for about 15 years now. But basically what it means is that instruction and curriculum are not as important as the humans we have in our district. The biggest weapon we have to fight poverty as a school district are the teachers in the classroom that are looking and dealing with our kids every day. So we are really going to refocus our efforts on developing that talent. So one of the first things we did in year one, and it was an eight week long process, was we began the interview process to hire our instructional leadership teams. We had 44 people apply for 33 openings, seven instructional coaches, and the rest were mentor teachers. Um, it was a two-tiered interview process. It was rigorous. It was a rigorous process. We had people drop out along the way. It was, it was huge. Um, it was a big, big process, lots of people involved. Um, and we chose our seven instructional coaches. These are the best of the best, handpicked by their principals. And they are phenomenal, phenomenal teacher leaders. So, yeah. And they have been working really hard. So instead of me telling you about each of the, the different parts of the grants, I wanted, well, they're not real happy with me, but I wanted them to come up and talk about different parts of the grants because I want to really humanize this for you. It's so much less about it being a grant and more about I mean, these are our game changers sitting right here. So I want you to know their names. I want you to know their voices. I want you to know just everything we can about them. And so I'm going to start with Angie Wack from Hornet Park. And she is the instructional coach there. This is her, get ready, her 31st <laughs> year teaching. All of them in Beach Grove City Schools. She is um, really, I, guys, there are a couple of things I want to point about Angie strong background in instruction and curriculum, but here's the best thing. She's got the street cred. Her <laughs> teachers love her. And street cred's important when we're trying to pull off what we pull off. So Angie's going to talk to you a little bit about some of our goals. Okay. They have it in front of them. Sorry. Okay. Have, yeah. not okay. It's not yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we will start with number one. And that one is creating a clear vision for HCMS improvement and alignment engage the stakeholders and create a multi-year plan so basically this will allow us to advance strategic goals and strengthen the capacity of all the leaders within the district by providing high quality coaching and support with focus on increasing teacher performance and student achievement um, goal number two we will implement a valid and reliable evaluation process to accurately measure teacher and school leader effectiveness so this goal entails training and annually certifying our observers. We've created two cycles of observations for our administrators and three for the instructional coaches um, and also the mentor teachers and career teachers as well. Uh, the third goal would be creating opportunities for career advancement through identification and training of teacher leaders. Teacher leadership roles and responsibilities will be established. This will allow us to create a leadership pipeline by using the roles to attract and retain um, highly effective teachers. Then number four is implement job embedded collaborative professional learning for teachers, teacher leaders, and school leaders. 
The school leadership teams will be trained to create and deliver weekly collaborative cluster meetings and with robust professional development. And then the last goal, number five, will be to create a PBCS, the performance-based compensation system, um, for teachers, teacher leaders, and school leaders that advances district and school goals. So performance-based compensation will be used to incentivize, recruit, and retrain our, or retain our experts. We will use recruitment incentives for those hard to staff positions and broaden our recruitment of teachers with diverse backgrounds. Next up, thank you, Angie. Next up is going to be Crystal Majors from Central. This is Crystal is in her sixth year of teaching and um, natural born leader. She's our I call her the baby of our no. instruction. <laughs> she's our youngest, but she's intelligent. She's got grit. She's got work ethic. She's incredibly passionate. And one of the things that I remember it from her application is she said, Central is home. Oh, that's nice. All right, thanks. Well, Mary loves me and gave me the shortest part to talk about. <laughs> um, so I'm here to talk about the interview and then also the NIET school review. So to start out, they had to establish an interview committee. So they wanted um, all stakeholders kind of on board with that. So we had a CTA representative. We had someone from NIET sit in on the interviews district admin and then also building admin and then she did talk a little bit about the rigorous interview and it definitely was so it's a two-part interview the first part consisted of open-ended questions um, kind of asking us about our teaching efficacy and also some scenario based questions and then the second part super fun to do during you know I learned testing and I read testing <laughs> last year that was the data analysis performance task so we were given K through 8th reading and math data. We were also given the PSAT 10th and 11th grade data. And we could also incorporate whatever other data we wanted to. So I learned things like that. And we were asked to make a presentation that, you know, addressed the greatest need of our district. And so, you know, having to do that in front of a lot of people, that was definitely challenging, but definitely weaved out the people that wouldn't be fit for this job. And so we presented that um, to the committee. And then, yeah, that was fun times. So then next is the NIET school review. So that's the National Institute and in Excellence of Teaching. Um, so they came in um, in all of our schools. They did walkthroughs. They did observations of our clusters. They interviewed our ILT. They interviewed different staff members. And then based on that data, um, they came up with a refinement and a reinforcement for not only our school, but our district. And so with that, that's kind of what led us and paved the pathway for our professional development. Next up, we got a two-for-one treat coming from South Grove, and that's Dee Dee Horn and Beth Walker. So combined together, combined together, we have 49 years of experience between these two. And I do want to point out, I'm not going to call, but I did point out the baby. So now I'm going to point out the most experienced, the better, Dee Dee, with 32 so years, weird. but she looks fabulous. Um, and they are, if you want to, if you really want to talk about, this is a great hearing. Mm -hmm. And we have two instructional coaches at South Grove in the high school because of, just mainly because of the size of the staff and the students. Um, they complement each other. They have great work ethic. They're both very, very passionate about their learning community. And they want to, um, they really want to, to improve the entire learning community for their staff and their students. They're just very passionate about their colleagues, which stood out about these two. I will say too real quick, my, I, my name recently changed, so I'm Beth Hudson now, which is really weird for everybody, including me. <laughs> so, in case you're wondering why it says Beth Hudson on the side, that's, that's a new development. Um, <laughs> so we're going to talk about some of the training and professional development that not just the instructional coaches, but also the principals and other members of the staff um, here in Beach Grove have gone through to help make this um, a smooth transition. So that kicked off back in March of this year. Um, on the 4th and the 18th, our principals took place, uh, or took part in the NIET principal workshop. Um, and then kind of sandwiched between that was uh, March 10th and 11th, uh, all the building principals, um, district administration, and then all of us instructional coaches had the opportunity to go to the NIET National Conference in Dallas, Texas. Um, and it was a great time of learning, but even more importantly, a great time of just community building and us kind of creating a shared vision and starting uh, this partnership that, um, you know, we're implementing this year. 
Um, and then we kicked off our summer, May 31st, uh, June 1st and 2nd, um, with some TAP rubric training and certification. Um, and that is the rubric that we use um, to evaluate our staff, but also to coach them um, and help uh, create that atmosphere of just continuous development and growth in our teachers. Okay. So then in June, we all, June 13th and 14th, we all did virtual training for a cluster. Um, you know, we have a lot of new members on our ILT team, so just what exactly cluster meant and um, the success criteria. That's a new buzzword for um, cluster. And then um, later in June, in the, um, a group of um, ILT members went to Arizona for the NIET Summer Institute. And then finally, um, in July, um, everyone here went through ILT training, which is Instructional Leadership Team, all the acronyms, right, in, <laughs> in education. Um, so yeah, so we've been um, very, very, very busy with our training, but it's all been um, fabulous, so. Thank you. Yeah, I, I also wanna, come on up, Kathy Keller from the middle school, and while she's coming up, um, I also wanna point out, we took probably a fourth to a third of their summer yeah. for professional development. These guys gave a lot of their time to learn and develop. And I want to welcome a 26-year veteran, all at the middle school, uh -huh. Kathy Keller, which personally I love middle school. I know a couple of us, couple of us are hard, die hard middle school, but you got to be a little crazy to be at middle school. Like <laughs> she knows that. One of the things that stands out about Kathy is she brings a ridiculously strong background in best instructional practices and in supporting novice teachers. I remember there was one year, we always ask our new teachers who's been a support, right? One year like three people nominated her, three new teachers in her building. Um, and she just has a fervent belief that all teachers deserve coaching and support that will help them be better teachers for their students. Go ahead, Kelly. Um, so I'm talking about future training. So the um, foundation of this is that we're building the capacity of our staff to help our students be successful. So um, we've heard about all of the training that we've already done, which has been a lot. Um, but we're going to continue with that. Um, so we have monthly meetings with Mary and NIET, the instructional coaches do. Um, they have a rubric for everything, and one of the rubrics that's going to be focused on is for the principals and vice principals um, to build their capacity to help all of us. There's going to be quarterly district um, leadership team meetings with all of the people that are on the instructional leadership teams. Um, we are working to um, help accelerate the learning loss and get that taken care of. We're going to be interacting a lot with the um, teaching and learning standards rubric that NIET has. In fact, we start our clusters next week um, where we really dig into that with our teaching staff. Um, and our big focus this year is going to be on success criteria and student ownership. We've really got to make sure students know what they're supposed to be doing and that they are taking ownership of their learning. It can't just be us standing up there telling them what's important. They have to decide that it's important for themselves. And finally, from the high school, last and certainly maybe least, we have two. Oh, wow. <laughs> they, Martin Barker and Brian Carter. So Martin is finishing or starting his eighth year in the district, and Brian Carter, who, side note, is a Beach Grove graduate, uh, I love that. is digging into his... Uh, I'm going to make sure, 16th year, sorry, it said Jason, I got confused. <laughs> we call him Jason Carter sometimes for no reason. Um, they both, here's, listen, we had a lot of people apply to be instructional coaches at the high school. And the agonized, Andy was sitting there making pairs of what, what these two work together and these two and different things like that. What really stands out about these two, and it's a little unusual at this, at this high school level, is they are radically student focused. Students are their primary focus. You usually see that in an elementary setting. You don't always see it at the high school level. They have such a commitment to not just academically improving the performance of students, but from a social emotional perspective, from a developmental perspective, they're just great caregivers and that's really what them, made them both stand out. And in their applications, and this was really clear, they honed in so much about kids was kind of a no-brainer for Amy Carr to go with these two. 
Awesome. So I'm going to start us off. Um, we've talked a little bit about the education professions pathway, so uh, recruiting our own students into the careers in education. Um, and so that goal is just we want to hire and retain highly qualified people, uh, especially Beach Grove alumni, and that starts with educating our students that we have right now in our building. Um, so we now have an education professions pathway uh, that uh, Mr. Carter, myself, and Ms. Herman all teach courses on. Uh, those courses are the principles of teaching that Mr. Carter's teaching, uh, child and adolescent development, which is what I am teaching, and then teaching and learning, which is what Ms. Herman is teaching. Um, and so as of next year, this could possibly be a dual credit opportunity for our students, so getting college credit for taking these courses. Um, and all of these courses have a huge classroom observation component. So. Uh, we're going to have tons of time with our students in classrooms within our district getting to see our teachers and hopefully our administrators um, in action um, and just getting to build those relationships and see what it's really like to be a teacher uh, right here in Beach Grove. So, um, and I'll turn it over to Brian to talk about the last two parts. Well, good evening. Thank you, everybody, for having us here. Uh, it's, uh, it's been fun, honestly. It's been different. It's been a challenge in a good way. Um, I think, I don't want to speak for the instructional coaches, but I, I mean, it's fun to meet new people, but I think you've heard over and over again of the commitment that you're going to find from the leaders that are sitting back here. Um, it's, it's exciting. So let me speak about some of the things that we were talking about with career ladders. As Mr. Carr kind of mentioned this um, prior, we're trying to identify and support those teachers and staff that um, really might have that inkling of like, you know, I want to advance into this career, and I've already had the chance. And Mary let me, or yeah, Mary let me lead one of the meetings uh, earlier this week. But um, where we sit down with them and try to walk through the different pathways that there are to get a teaching license. And um, I have a CTE business background, so it's kind of nice to see those um, different pathways made available to, for teachers to who maybe don't have a traditional um, educational background setting to move into that into that pathway. Um, like was mentioned before, we have about 16, I think, staff members in our district many of them who are Beach Grove alumni, like myself, and, um, and I'll speak on that in a second, but just try to give them that opportunity to, you know, as they're already a part of the family, just, um, you know, maybe move up to that next step in their career path. Um, one of the third things we wanted to talk about is the partnerships that we're going to start and have already kind of been collaborating with, uh, with local universities to attract and hire staff. Um, you're going to hear over and over to, you know, keep our own, but we also you know, we want to grow others who are nearby, um, and that's kind of through Marion University's residency program and through the UND um, College of Education. So it's exciting, and I, I don't want to um, overstep my bounds, but like I heard, and I don't know if it's Mrs. Cotter say this, but challenge isn't the right word, but I invite you to come in. Um, there's so much cool stuff happening, and the spirit, you can just feel it. I don't know, I'm excited, and I get, I get emotional about it because it's, it means a lot to me because it's my community. So. You see that kind of development, and I'm excited to be a part of it. So thank you for your time. So Brian just ended it perfectly. And genuinely, um, when I talked about the passion that they have, you just saw it, right? This is, I, and those of you who know my background, uh, you actually, Laura actually took me out for lunch eight years ago on my birthday yeah. and said, this is like our third time offering you a job. Yep. Leave the National Institute of Excellence <laughs> in Teaching. Leave you Indy. So this was, I've trained most of the people. I've trained people in 22 different states, multiple districts on this. I have worked with literally hundreds of master teachers and instructional coaches, which is what we call ours, and in the private sector. And um, originally, I did not want this direct. I mean, I was like, give it to someone else. Look, I'm ready to kind of retire soon. And then I kind of got bullied by a couple of the principals. <laughs> I threatened more like it. <laughs> but I will say this about the instructional coaches, this particular group, these seven. This is the most amazing group of, of teacher leaders. They are sharp. They are intelligent. They are hardworking. I would have them on a zombie apocalypse team with me. <laughs> um, the intelligence, work ethic, experience, compassion, dedication this group has. Um, you're going to see Beach Grove on stage at a national conference soon. You really will. So let's give our instructional coaches a round of applause. Dr. Hammond, would you mind if they left? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fourth meeting, but no, I don't mind at all.
But I would be remiss, Mary, before you sit down. I think all of us um, just want to take a moment and just lift up Mary. Uh, what you have done through this process. second to none. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. Get out while you can. Yeah. Thank you all for your summers. Thank you. Something. Yes. It truly is just not just I have to make They're going to hold you to that, yeah. Rick. <laughs> to leave Beach Grove and she's going to move up there to be closer to work. So because of that, we wanted to give her something to thank her for everything that she's done for us. So one thing we want to give you is this plaque to thank you for being part of the board, thank for being you. an important member, for helping us be who we are today. And even the best award, we want to give you this bouquet of flowers mm -hmm. because we love you. We want to wish you the very best. And please come back and visit us. Thank you. Of course I will. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. I will always remember you. Thank you. And I'll carry this back for you. Thank you so much. I'll take this Public comment. Oh, we don't have any. Does anybody here? We don't have any public. public. <laughs> nope. Curriculum. Okay, so we have <laughs> Mitzi. We have community relations. Skip and Steve. Then. Oh, I'm um, Steve's yeah. out this well, evening. Yeah, I, know. I was there. <laughs> He's not well, so we're going to do curriculum update next. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, will. Absolutely. I would like to. I mean the as the instructional coaches left, um, they did each take me on a tour of the building. Um, I kind of, I asked them if they, if they would, you know, uh, from them. And I would second what Mary said, because I actually was an instructional coach. Um, I have done that job. They were kind, they were welcoming, they probably took more time than they needed to with me. Uh, they are a great group and I do feel very comfortable reaching out to them. So if they, if passing that on to them at all, but I got to go to every single building with each of them, and it was it was wonderful. Um, do, were you able to do the live links for the videos at all? I don't know. We were trying to make it so that the documents that um, we sent out to you were live. Like, do you remember if you were able to actually click on I any of the try. links that were in Mitzi's okay. update? I did. Oh, good. I think okay, I did. Great. Yeah, yeah. That's what we now, tried. Yeah. I, we you don't sure. need to have we could done send them that. Separately I just in an email or okay. something. But I just wanted to see if you were able to. If great. You were. That's good to know. It, it, this is just an addition that um, we would like to start adding. As you know, videos speak sometimes louder than words anymore as you see a lot of newspapers even going away from the, the in, in the digital print hoping to spotlight intentionally different things but it's interesting as I've dug into this amazing district my list is changing evolving and it's getting incredibly long um, I'm not an expert in this in any way but there's so much to highlight that I'm trying to kind of to, to prioritize it right now but I, I hope that you know the SROs I thought they were incredible and they were they were gracious to let me, it was a great video. It was my first time using like a lapel mic, and a, mm -hmm. I plugged something into the phone, and it was like I, I was so scared it wasn't going to take, and they were going to have to do it again. But um, we're trying to highlight some different things yeah, uh, with with good. the district, and that will <laughs> that will kind of ebb and flow as we go on that as well. Yeah. So and videos, uh, media requests. This is a little dated, but I'm hoping you not saw all the amazing. Dr. Hammock and Mr. Gearhart make their 
television debut of this school We're going to get an Emmy. I, I just know it. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Local Emmy. Local Emmy. Dr. Hammock did it live. Mr. Gearhart uh, still, though, he killed it, um, yeah. both of them. And somebody was fabulous, and somebody was awesome, and somebody was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're all <laughs> extraordinary. Oh, look, extraordinary. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> but they are. Um, yeah. So hopefully, but the media requests have come in. It's yeah. been really heavy. Mm -hmm. I feel like as soon as schools, so other school districts started, it, it, it went away. Yeah. Bit. But uh, we've done what we can. Um, some more district marketing. That's still we're still waiting on that. That's as uh, Mary talked about from the grant. Mm -hmm. The branding, uh, graphic design, marketing plans, some different things. It's still it's still in the process. The website it's very slow, but it's very intentional. I bet every two days I get a message. Okay, here's something now that's changed. Uh, buttons at the bottom is one of my new favorites. If you get on there, they're they're a little bit more they're easier to read. So you'll have your COVID sure. update, you'll have your uh, meal update lunch health um, it's not done it's not perfect and as soon as you tell a parent where to go I'm gonna in, in a month it, it could change but we're trying to get it very we can navigate it much easier than when we first did it so it's still frustrating I know um, she's she's doing some things in the back end right now but that is coming one thing that is not on here is we have a new um, you are gonna get a new sting team it's you will be it's a very exciting very thing that um, this Thursday, someone in the district will be stung, and by being stung, that is a good thing. We have a bag basket of goodies, and Dr. Hammock and I will, we have a random wheel that it will get spun, and we are actually going to send it out so people know it's random, um, where we show up. And then we're going to honor that employee both at that moment and then through social media, through, and it's going to be neat because I think it's going to, you're going to, you're going to honor people that maybe don't feel like gifts they have been honored yeah. before. Yeah. It's, really it's not like wheel. It's important. Oh, it's close, but it's fun. Um, it's got music, and then when it lands on the name, it says you've been stung, and it's super cute. And um, but but it is it is there is there's more than just the fun aspect of it. It's going to honor, and the names on the wheel go from food service um, to preschool teachers mm -hmm. to administrators. Every employee. And it's every employee. Bus drivers. You know. Every employee as of yeah. <laughs> today. <laughs> great. Um, so that'll be fun, and that's something that will go out. So How these are, are do that? once a week. Always right. on Thursday? Oh, no. Oh. You never know when you'll be stung. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is also intentional because, like, if we're out for, yeah. like, a <laughs> we can't really say every day. Yeah. And then, um, but we're going to do it every week, yeah. and it'll every be a week, lot of fun. And we're just going to blow into someone's classroom and just celebrate and lift up whoever or cafeteria or you name it. It's yeah. gonna be great. So Mitzi, Mitzi's the spinner. I have it's the electronic. Wheel. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can send you the we link. We did it at our back to school breakfast. Um, and right. everyone seemed to enjoy that. So we thought that we could just replicate it out weekly and um, random and fun and just a, a surprise. And, and the prizes are gonna vary. We have t shirts that we have yeah. extra, we have some gift cards left. Just we goofy. may, uh, I would like to say, here's 30 minutes that I will come in your room and be your substitute. Yeah. There's fun. Yeah. Come, come, go. Here's a $5 subway card. Go take an extra lunch. It, it's not going to be over the top. Yeah. Because we can't sustain that. No. <laughs> but as it evolves, it will be it will different. And Steph, you really helped. Steph had the idea with the t-shirts. So we got the extra t-shirts. Yeah. So we have those, which, was, love which was awesome. So be fun. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Great. Thank you. Personnel update, Brian? You know, the Sting team's kind of hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Okay, and, and he, he did help with the name, and I hate to give him credit because rarely do I ever do that, but he did, he did kind of like the Sting. It's a great name. Yeah. Um, the the uh, teacher orientation was, I think, very successful, yes. and you kind of heard that theme from some of the principals that the teacher shortage um, is real, uh, and it's probably not going to go away anytime soon. I think we're going to be stuck in this pattern for a while, but the principals just did an amazing job of hiring some really outstanding new teachers, and that was evident at the teacher orientation. A really great group. Um, it seemed like there for a while that Mr. Carr was kind of playing whack-a-mole. He would get one hired, and then he would lose one about the, the next day. So it is really a challenge right now. 
Um, I put on there that at the, at the moment we have a special ed opening um, at South Grove that is temporarily filled. We're hoping that uh, we coach someone out of retirement that hopefully um, will stay for the year. I don't know if we'll be able to accomplish that, but uh, Gina's team did such a great job of meeting, and, and as soon as that was over, uh, he was like, yeah, I want to be part of, of South Grove. So uh, I thought that was really nice. And we have a choir position at the middle school that I, I believe we have filled. Uh, we're kind of still waiting that process out, but um, so that'll be nice if we can get those two positions filled. But the new teacher orientation is a great starting point for retaining teachers. Um, you know, that's an important thing is that we not only hire great teachers, but are able to retain them. And the orientation was a great starting point. I thought we had uh, a really great opening day with them. And I know that the principals then took a lot of time the next two days to be able to connect with them and talk about initiatives in the building to make them feel comfortable. Um, a couple of the other things that um, are really related, the, the temporary teacher contracts or short-term short contracts for teachers, and also the 30-day hold. I, I referenced the law, the Indiana Code there for you. It's not something that um, a lot of schools experienced. I never experienced it uh, five, even five years ago as a, as a building leader, uh, but you're seeing that invoked a lot more now. Um, and the new one, I think, is really the 14-day hold that a lot of people weren't aware of, that 14 days prior to the start of a school year, you can still hold teachers if they're all even on a status quo contract. So it makes it a, a very difficult thing when you want to hire someone and the corporation's either holding them for 30 days. Some corporations are trying to hold on letters of intent. I, I think there's still a lot of question whether that's legal, uh, it's a, if it's a legally binding contract. but. They're attempting to do that because everyone is still in that mode of, of desperate mode, really, at this point, to try to retain teachers. Um, so that's something that we want to work with our teachers association to make sure that we are at a competitive disadvantage on what our practices are, so that um, we don't uh, have a policy that would, you know, where we wouldn't hold teachers, but someone else does, and then that puts us at a disadvantage. So that's something we'll need to work with. Also, temporary um, and short-term contracts, they're, they're applied differently, but being able to um, give someone a temporary or short-term contract would allow us to lock them in. So let's say that somebody signs a temporary or short-term contract, then we can hold them for that 30 days while we try to search for someone if they decide to leave. And I think that's an important thing for us to be able to do so it doesn't disadvantage our students. But um, it's also important if we, and, and I asked the question because it may not feel comfortable with that, but being able to turn those contracts around very quickly because what happens is they are still in the search of a job process when before they sign that temporary or long or short-term contract. So um, we had that happen with a high school where someone agreed to one and then in the time period of waiting for the contract, took a job somewhere else. So um, that's, a, that's a difficult situation, and, and so that's a thought, is, is if we could electronically sign those or get those turned over quickly, maybe there's another method to use to get someone to get that contract signed quickly, give them a time period to get it signed. We could have them sign a letter of intent. I don't think it's legally binding uh, if they really want out of it. I don't think we can hold them with a letter of intent. So it's something to think about if, if there's a possibility for that. Um, Brian's referencing yeah. just I, we know that the board and we really respect this that the board really believes in and I think it's a beautiful thing you know, hand signing teacher contracts mm -hmm. and I think that that's fantastic and I know when you're in the roles of signing you're, you're sitting there for a long time this would only be for occasions where a temporary contract the very very rare that this would happen it just happened that this year we had a couple of cases where this would apply we would e our, our plan would be that we would email you all, let you know the person that is being recommended for this temporary contract, and ask for your, your blessing if, if the approval, or if we could just go ahead and have that electronic signature go. Again, this would be less than a handful of contracts a year, probably just a couple. Um, it's like a so, you sign. So exactly, just so that we could just turn it around right. real fast and just get those back out. If sure. there are any concerns, let no. us know. No. Oh, we'll proceed with having you hand sign all contracts except for these very exclusive ones. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. That'll help, Ryan. And then maybe at the next meeting. You would still approve them. Yeah. Yes. At the next meeting, we publicly say we did this. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And then just finally, I guess, as a. Exactly. 
as just an update on, on uh, substitutes are also <laughs> continuing to be difficult to find. Yeah. Uh, so we tried a little different strategy with Kelly Education and they've been attending some of the open houses, uh, some of the um, back to school nights and have had a little bit more success as people have come in um, and, and everybody's in a great mood at, t at back to school night so mm -hmm. people are more inclined to get, take information from them and they've got some interviews lined up and some people that I think will ultimately become subs and also those people are connected to our schools their children go here so that they're more likely I think to sub here than they will somewhere else so um, hopefully that will be successful and we'll be able to get a little larger sub pool uh, from that but that continues to be a real challenge too that's it. Back in Kelly, because I have it for a while. I'll do that. I'd love to see you back to Kelly. Oh, I know. Are you making a debut? Erin's like, um, come right Well, you know, I haven't. <laughs> I've only done it like twice since the whole COVID thing sure. happened. And then we just kind of got out of doing it. And I guess I, I guess I could go back. I mean, I can go back in. I just need to check and see if my name's still on their list, because I haven't done it for like a year and a half. But sure they'll take me back because I think they're in desperate need. <laughs> yeah. We can confirm. We'll get you on the list tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so we need to make a motion to approve the employment recommendations. I'll make a motion to approve the employment recommendations as listed. I'll second this. April, was that you? Yes. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we need to make a motion to approve this uh, school teacher's handbook. I'll move that we approve the teacher handbook. April? I'll second. Kim, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Um, Dr. Hammock and Ms. Smith, we're going, Julia, we're going to um, do the business personnel update. Yes, uh, so really all of the items in my uh, update that were presented to you in your board packet, uh, we have addressed or will address here in just a moment. There are two pieces that I wanted to uh, add to my report that weren't included because I wanted you to have sort of hot off the presses data. Um, regarding enrollment uh, number one so that has certainly been on our minds and I know you all were asking last month and this has been stressful for all of us to be concerned that we might be in a position of losing enrollment um, but I have good news for you uh, now uh, I, I always feel like I have to be uh, careful when I, I share good news uh, as of today uh, which is not count day right so um, I will have another update for you in September and that will be very close to count day I want to say that count day is the 16th this year. It's that Friday. Um, but as of today, this, this data is from today, and really um, would like to applaud our building leaders and their administrative assistants who have been working very hard to ensure that our data are as clean as they could be, meaning uh, that withdrawals have been processed out of our system and new enrolled students have also been inputted in our system and that we are just about as as clean um, as we could be minus about 15 students that across the district we are still trying to reckon if they are ours or if they are someone else's at this point i think that's pretty darn good for two weeks in um, to be down to just about 15. so with that being said and those 15 students being included in this number um, our current uh, enrollment across the district is 2,898 students, which is up as compared to this time. So the September ADM from last year was 2,869 students. So we are up 29 as compared to this time last year. But the really good news is when we were so desperately concerned about February, the so February is actually in between, you know, September a year ago. So this just this past February, um, our enrollment was 2,764. So we are up 134 compared to February, which is wow. big. Yeah, yeah, it's really wonderful. And um, when that all translates out, uh, I don't I don't want to offer up a number for you at this point, but this will be um, very encouraging uh, for us when we if we can be at 20 students more than where we were this time last year that's really great in this day and age of lots and lots of other options that are out there um, so i think we're beginning to move the needle uh, the work that our principals are doing uh, in our buildings just second to none this year 
and I just really want to praise Mitzi, her work with communications, our next level, really taking us to be able to compete with uh, our neighbors who have been really hitting comms, you know, these last couple of years. I think that we will continue to not only attract, but retain our Beach Grove residents uh, in our school district. So really good news for you tonight. I was worried that this number might be one that we weren't so excited to share with you all. So it's, it's, it's great news. And then uh, uh, separate from enrollment, I just wanted to remind the board that we have a special work session. We're actually going to call it an executive session uh, on August the 23rd. This is, has been posted, I think, as a, as a date that we had on our calendar. But we will be trained on the 23rd um, with uh, Mr. K Dr. Uh, Kent Taconic, who is a retired superintendent working on um, just board superintendent roles, responsibilities. I would, this is a kind of a landing spot for us as we begin to be thinking strategically about sort of the future of our school district. And then simultaneously, um, that thing that you all love to do, which is the evaluation of the superintendent. It's all part of that process, and um, he will be able to walk us through um, all of that. Uh, and it'll be about a two-hour session, so we will start at 6.30 on the 23rd. And, I, and he expects for it only, he thinks that anything over two hours, you don't get much, you know, sort of thinking done. So a couple hours, and then we'll get you out, and we'll have Dulce feed you. What do I do now? No, nothing. Been on social media. No, <laughs> you, this is 100% about me. <laughs> you, no, no, no. We just need to make sure you've got everything that you need to evaluate me, and just know about all the wonderful things that I've been doing. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was wrong. Let me give you that horn so you can blow it. Kind of working together. So she. I think you've done excellent jobs. Kids? Sometimes you got to step back and say, shut up. <laughs> and then you start speaking again. Forgive me. Um, you're, you're, you talk. I just yes. want to see if we can approve so, it. Are you done? I am done. OK, then you guys go ahead and chat on your own little meeting. <laughs> okay, sorry. That's a little aggressive. <laughs> sorry. A little, a little side, yes, sorry. side gig there. Um, let's make a motion to uh, approve the uh, contract with uh, Dave Dixon for the 22 23. Uh, school year for the special event coordinator. Oh. Who was that, Rob? I'll second. April, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And then let's make a motion about the teacher appreciation grant. Let's approve that for the 22 23 year. I'll make a motion. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I'll second. All right. Okay. No, you got one. Sure I got one. Uh, sure <laughs> okay, Kim. And then we'll do Rick second, okay? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Gearhart. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we had on July 29th Robert Cravens begin with us. He was the gentleman we discussed um, in July as a HVAC person. Um, I do not, I don't know how we're going to quantify his value um, in the first three days. I was talking to Brett down below. I said, how many service calls do you think? He has saved us uh, in three days. And he said, I think three. Um, and that's so for our previous provider, that's 125 bucks just to drive on the property. So um, we're excited about uh, that. And he's working on the middle school chiller uh, tomorrow morning and getting that uh, fixed up. So we, we just think his value to us is going to be uh, very, very good. We also found a mechanic uh, who is currently employed with McAllister's who's going to come work for us five days a week. Um, the amount of money we were paying, I think I put in here, 1600 bucks a day is what we were paying McAllister, um, which is clearly not sustainable. So um, John is very skilled. He can do a lot of things that our previous mechanic did not. Um, talked about um, the amount of money we spent in April and May at, at Indy Springs doing um, spring inspections and kingpins. He, he could do all of that stuff. Um, as far as our drivers go, it is the same story um, as our neighbors and the same story that I have been talking about since I took this position. We are um, 
we cut two gen ed routes um, in each of our tiers. So we went from nine buses to two. Um, and we're still two drivers short. Um, Misty kind of keeps it together with uh, duct tape and bailing wire. And I don't know how she does it. Um, our assistant director is out ill. Um, so Misty and, and Curtis picked up those two routes. Well, now Curtis is out. And then we had another driver out. So it just becomes a domino effect. Um, so we're looking at, uh, Mitzi and I talked a little bit tonight about some ideas for recruitment. This is really, really hard right now. Um, and it's hard everywhere. So uh, that's where we are with drivers. But we picked up six. The personnel looks like we picked up three new subs and three new drivers. So those are retired drivers who don't really want to drive. So one of them is driving for us tomorrow. Um, so they're doing so this they are, It is yeah. emergency. Yeah. 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 Are we still comparable to our neighbors, pay-wise? We are. So if you break down our daily rate, it's $20.80 to start. Um, around us, I know Monroe County, um, in Bloomington, which would be fairly comparable, is 21. Um, the advantage that we have is that our, they pay on a daily rate, and our days shorter because we're so much smaller. Our distance is much yeah. smaller. So, whereas a Prairie Township or a Franklin Township driver drives seven and a half or eight hours, our drivers drive four and a half or five hours. So in that in that respect, we're very competitive. Um, we have some issues that, that we've talked about. So um, we've made some strides. We changed extracurricular um, in our last board meeting to an hourly rate versus a flat fee. Uh, we were paying $15 an hour across the board and difficult to fill those so we change those to to our own. So we're we're trying. Um, we've, the three tier we they got a bump and then we they got a raise again last year. Should we do like they do in Puerto Rico where we let the bus drivers decorate the buses however they want? <laughs> that, that might be a good idea. idea. Little <laughs> yeah yeah. Christmas lights, let the students put their handprints on. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Aaron talks a little bit about Hornet Park. It was a, uh, a race to get it open. That is absolutely true, but um, we made it for the first day. It is incomplete. Um, the North Corridor, which was the original one, needs to have wall co coverings done on it. Um, there are 12 rooms in the original plan that we had intended on renovating during the school year from the outset. So we're doing two, we move those two teachers into two open rooms. They're renovating them, we'll move them back and move on around the building. So I, I do encourage you, if you have not been in there, it is absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, it's, it's nice, it is a nice building. Um, Incredible. <laughs> So well, let's, schedule, um, let's, let's schedule a board tour of, would that be okay, Mrs. Oh, Provis? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Well, <laughs> next time we get together, we'll find a time that we can have you all go through the building. That would be great. I think it's really striking, yeah, too, while we have the rooms With the that are still old. Yes. You can compare them to the new, yeah. and it's, you're like, ooh, jeez. Yeah. We're not in good you shape. You have to apologize to the teachers for letting them teach in that. So I, I listed um, the things that are being done there. I won't go through all of those. Um, paving, we're adding an extra uh, stacking lane uh, next to the tennis courts. That's scheduled to be paved here in the next couple of weeks. Um, finish layer on the bus lot will be done, I think, at the same time. There is some coordinating with the city on their parking lot because there's a little bit of overlap. So. Uh, performance is working with them. As for the concession stands, the 
underground work um, is all done on both the big one, A, and the small one, B. Um, the big one has the footings poured. They're doing the um, foundation block. The slab will be poured next week. They'll start building block at the end of August. They should be delivering the steel trusses. So it's not going to probably get done as we originally wanted uh, in that time frame. But it should go pretty quick after they start building the block. So that's where we are on the concessions. Is that it? That's it. Thanks, Mr. Gearhart. Um, we have minutes and claims. Who'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from July? Was that Beth? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we need to approve the claims for July. Aye. Beth? Second. April, April, was that you? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, now we need to make a motion to approve the fundraisers. But before, we, well, we'll do that and then I'm going to say something afterwards. So let's make a motion to approve the fundraisers as presented in the notes that we have. So moved. Rick? Second. Kim, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, I'm going to do this. We've never done this before. I don't think we have. I'm going to tell people what the fundraisers are because we never tell the public what your fundraisers are. And somebody w might want to buy what you guys are doing. Yeah, so, that's a great idea. Um, Hornet Park, This some of this is for the parents of the students and not for the public. But for Hornet Park, we're going to have dollar days the first Friday of every month, right? And so we would like each homeroom to be, they're going to be collecting a dollar from all their students that want to participate. So parents, first Friday of every month at Hornet Park, give your kids a dollar. And the money is going to be used for um, incentive programs for the students. And if you have any questions about that, you can contact Angela English or Amy Parker. And then from 9, 8 to 10, 9, students are going to be selling from the Paragon catalog. Now I looked that up, it was not attached. But the money is going to be used for field trips for the kids this year. So if you have any questions about that, call Angela English. She can give you a catalog. She can tell you what's in there so people can buy. And then at the middle school, the Junior National Honor Society, which is new, is going to be selling the Discovery Indie coupon book for 25 bucks from August the 10th through May 19th of 23. And these funds are going to be used to benefit a local charity or organization, which is really nice. And then for parents, they're going to be selling Ozark Delight lollipops all year during the school day and after <laughs> school. And these funds are going to help pay for activities and events for the Honor Society. So parents, pony up some cash. And uh, for the high school, we need to contact Michael Dean Chamber Choir, Elan, and Jubilaires are going to be selling butter braid pastries. If you guys have had any of these, yum. So they do pastries, rolls, and they're also going to have a four cheese and herb braid. And it's going to help offset fees for costumes and event travel, which if any of you have had kids in any of these, it's expensive. And they're going to do that from September 12th to 926, and you can get hold of Michael Dean at the high school. How's Thank that? you for doing that. You're welcome. That very good. Thank you. Um, and then we need to approve the field trip application. I'll move. For cheerleaders, right? It's for cheerleaders. Yeah, but it was, it was passed, wasn't it? It was, like, it was in July. Yeah, yeah. The cheerleaders go We're kind of state. approving at, after the fact, but we knew about it. So was some, did you say you'd second, Rick? I second it, yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And C9. Um, Jill's not going to be able to do that this evening because she's out ill. And do we have any other things, comments, questions from the board? Jill, once, Kim, once again, we want to thank you for everything. Thank you for being part of us. Thank you for helping make us better. Um, best of luck in everything. Thank you. I do want to say something. And the board knows this. I think the principals have all seen it over the year and a half. I, I don't say a lot. And when I do, you know, it's because I've thought about it. Um, 
I wanted to be on this board because I missed being in education. Um, I was a classroom teacher for eight years. I got out of it right before COVID, worked for the state, and it was really getting to know these people, but more getting to know you and your teachers and your students that wanted to put me back in the classroom. Isn't it nice. was so this is not an easy move, but you did this, <laughs> whether that's good or bad. Um, I'm very excited to be back in the classroom. Um, I grew up in Beach Grove. I'm, I'm not super thrilled to be leaving. My folks live like five minutes away yeah. from me. Right now, they're going to be about 40 when I move. Um, but I, I think it's the right move, and I just want to thank you for your support. It's awesome. It's, it's, it's been wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. We enjoyed having you. I do have something as well. Um, for our community, September 24th, uh, a group of us are putting a uh, raffle together for uh, Ryan Brown. I don't know. I mean, you guys know the Brown family. Uh, we've got three boys in the school system. Uh, Ryan goes in for surgery, uh, again, for brain cancer. Um, in the next couple of weeks, right, Steph? It's before the event, right? Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it, it's coming to you. Yeah. What we are going to do is um, September 24th at the new event center attached to um, O'Gara's on Main Street, we are going to have a raffle. And it's kind of like the old Southside Catholic style raffle. It's going to be $25 a ticket. We'll have an MC that will be constantly pulling you know, people out. And we have a couple uh, larger ticket items that I think we're going to buy and, and sell chances on that as well. Um, we have decided we are going to go ahead and provide food. Uh, in fact, I need to talk to you about that after this. Sure. But, uh, it's, it's, really it's basically a, a you know a big 50 50 but if you know that their boys are in all kinds of sports they're it's great just people. a great 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 family and if anybody else needed it they 100 percent would step up and do it so since they are in three different buildings in our district if anybody would like to buy a ticket we're going to have some printed up and they'll be just get with Email Steph, email me. We'll, you know, we'll get the information out to you. It's a great deal. Well, I too would like to thank you, Kim, for your service to our community. Thank you very much. And although you're leaving Beach Grove Preparatory School, <laughs> we wish you the best. Uh, uh, obviously, it's a good move for you to be closer to the yeah. And I want to give an update on my FFA veggies that I purchased. Um, Oh. It's very concerning. The tomatoes have taken over. Uh -huh. <laughs> they do that. Choked out the cucumbers, which cucumbers were very close to my heart. I'm sorry for your loss. The, <laughs> the, the hot peppers are, uh, I think the uh, uh, hazmat team are going to be coming by because you want to talk about hot. Oh my gosh. I don't do hot, but these are beyond what they should be. So if you like hot, hot peppers, just hit me up on whatever way you can and take it off my hands so because they tomatoes? are hot. We have tomatoes. We have tomatoes. We have, tomatoes. We have, we have big tomatoes. Uh, we did have cucumbers until our, literally our tomato plants are seven feet tall. I'm not exaggerating. Oh they're seven feet tall. I was going to say, I'll agree with him because whatever they did, uh, they have survived some serious drought conditions yeah, and they have done dry. really well. Yeah. Well, we've been good about watering, watering you but know, but it, they have literally taken over. I mean, yeah. I bet you we have... 16,842 and a half tomatoes. I mean, they're just. You'll be bringing them into the next board meeting. We have tomato soup and salsa. Salsa. Yeah, not a salsa. No, but for, I mean, I don't know what they did when they grew these over in the garden, in the greenhouse. so great. These things have absolutely flourished. Green peppers, banana peppers, hot peppers. I mean, I've never in my life had a hot pepper out of a garden like that. So next time around, you should take advantage because they're really good. Yeah. We have an ag advisory board meeting tomorrow night, yeah. and I'm going to share that testimony. I'll, I'll send you a picture. Oh, ah, that'd be literally amazing. Literally, they're seven feet tall. I love it. Oh, that's so good. That's, Mr. Bai is going to love that. Anything else? That noise? Who would like what to make a motion to adjourn? Oh, Who would oh, like I to will make motion. a motion? To okay, Rob. <laughs> Who'd like a second? I'll second to All right. Oh, okay. you're a second. Okay.
Okay, everybody. Meetings adjourned. So we have a work session where we're going to talk about um, your dress guidelines, and then right after the work sessions, we'll have an executive session where the board will be talking about the replacement process for our suite, Kimba. So.